Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Twitter.com video, we're going to be discussing yet more about the always online requirements of the Xbox One. You may have noticed that they were suspiciously quiet on the initial reveal and just how it's going to work. Well, according to Wired, there's quite a lot of information that has now been released or at least rumored to be released about the next generation Xbox. The first is that you can actually install any game from disk to the console's hard drive and then play that game whenever you like without needing to put the disk in. They even asked them whether the installation would be mandatory and there was a statement which said on the new Xbox all game discs are installed to the HDD to play. So, um, this is out of quote, I suppose you could say that that is pretty much mandatory, at least to me. So... That leads to the inevitable conclusion that it must somehow be tied to either that console or to an Xbox Live account. Because let's say otherwise, you come in with your friend, Tom, and you, you know, buy a game and then you install it to your Xbox, he can install it to his Xbox, and then you can sell that game on and... The game never depreciates in value because you can basically install it to so many different systems. In other words, one game could theoretically be inst uh, one game disc could theoretically go into like a thousand different systems. Apparently, though, Microsoft did say that if the disc was used on a second account, that owner would be given. So, in other words, the owner of the second account would be given an option to pay a fee and then install the game from the disc. So, in effect, you've basically used that disc. To install. This principle is actually very similar to, say, Windows. Let's say your friend's Windows 7 disk breaks, just for example, but he already owns a Windows 7 code. Then you can simply use that code, his code, shall I say, to install Windows 7. It's that simple. And it works absolutely fine. It's completely legal. In actuality, all you're doing is actually paying a license for the software, which is kind of close to how games are becoming now. So, what about if you do not want to install the game? What about if you just want to put the disc in and play it? Now, there are a couple of examples of this. One would be that, well, you're just taking your disc to a friend's house. Another would be that there's only a finite amount of space on the hard drive, it's only 500 gigabytes. Now, I know only sounds a bit silly when you're talking about, you know, 500 gig, but bear in mind that the discs themselves could take, you know, the Blu ray discs up to 50 gigabytes in size. And even if it was a two terabyte hard drive, the bottom line is there's still a finite amount of space. And maybe that you just don't want to install it. Maybe the game, say a fighter game, it doesn't really require an install. Or maybe you just don't want to install it. Well, in which case, Microsoft haven't really answered us. Because the problem with that is, once again, you and your friend could club together, buy the original game, you install it on your machine, you give it to your friend, and then they could play it. You see the problem there? So that would be very similar to the traditional concept of used games, or say, lending a friend uh, a game, or whatever. And Microsoft have said that they do have a plan for used games. But those details right now were, and I quote, forthcoming. In other words, they're not ready to reveal them, maybe at E3 or whatever. So let's move on to the always online requirements. So in other words, <clears throat> you are playing a single player game, say the next Final Fantasy or Metal Gear Solid, whatever it is. And you have absolutely no interest whatsoever in playing online or your internet goes down, whatever. What happens then? So, can you play that game? Or does your Xbox freeze up, or what? Well, they didn't answer that in the conference. In fact, they completely ignored it in the conference. However, there have been already rumours, and it seems to be the rumour season, of course. Microsoft Azure is their cloud-based computing services. And as I mentioned in a previous video, the idea is that you can have a ridiculous amount of computing power, all those different computers basically team up to provide either storage, computational assistance, um, whatever you need really, even CDM, which is Content Delivery Networks. Now, Microsoft's Azure Cloud is actually really powerful, and the idea of the Xbox One is supposedly it will allow game developers to actually create games that use Azure cloud-based computing 
So they might be able to offload certain computing tasks rather than having them being processed on the Xbox. So obviously in those cases, you would actually need to be connected to the internet. In other words, if the game required those, those cloud computing tasks, you would need an internet connection. They are not, however, the developers are not forced to create games like this. So in other words, if they don't feel they need these cloud-based features, they do not uh, need to design the game to do this. However, the Xbox executive, Witten, said to Wired, but I hope they do. In other words, they do use this functionality. I have a few questions on this. How is it going to be used? Now, obviously, cloud-based computing is great and all, but the convoy, as I've said a million times over now, the convoy is only as fast as the slowest ship. In other words, I don't care how fast the Xbox uh, One is. I don't care how fast Azure is. If you've only got a 2 megabyte per second internet connection, or your internet connection is a bit laggy today, or even if you've got a bloody fast internet connection, I don't care if you've got 120 megabyte connection, which I've got. Uh, yeah, that's not 176 gigabytes per second. I know I'm just using the Sony's figures here to be a bit, you know, comical, but you get the idea. In other words, I want to know just what features will be offset because obviously certain computational tasks can be offset. However, I have a feeling it's going to be more multiplayer orientated, maybe to do with the world and that type of thing. Once again, though, we'll have to wait and see. I wouldn't be surprised if it could be stuff like AI. Um, that could be possible. So, for example, you know, it would help to control your squad mates. That would be pretty reasonable. And that would be a pretty reasonable example because, in a reality, all it would be is the equivalent of the AI moving the characters almost like a... Well, it wouldn't really require that much data, at least in theory. However, what they actually really do with it is still unknown. I think one thing is absolutely clear. And that is, the Xbox One has just as many questions going in, or sorry, going out of the event as what it does going in. In fact, more. Because going into the event, we were actually really quite happy with the status quo. We weren't actually sure if it requires online. In fact, from the memo, and I use quotations there, the, the developers supposedly passed around, it didn't require always online. And we knew about the TV services. We had no idea about the power, but a lot of this stuff was skimmed over, and I didn't like that that much. Um, I got the feeling that they were trying to hold stuff back for Sony, or maybe because they hadn't solidified some of the stuff, or maybe they were still working on it. They knew what they wanted, but they just weren't quite ready to show it. And all of that's great, but it also leaves us with lots of questions. And in a way, that's really good. But in a way, it's a bit bloody frustrating as well, because I want to see what's going on. And I'm sure many of us do as well. So anyway, how much RAM does the Xbox have? 8 gigabytes. what type? Sod knows. What type of X64 processor? Most likely the Jaguar. They've not confirmed it. You see a pattern here. I certainly bloody well do. Whether any of this cloud-based stuff is actually really going to come to fruition, or whether it's just thoughts and um, idle curiosity, and just the degree as well it's used is still unknown. I'm not really sure what if I like the idea of a plan for secondhand, or used, or whatever you want to call it. My concern here is this. I don't have a problem with the blocking of used games in theory, at least to me, because I personally, from a selfish point of view, do not usually buy these games. Because in the UK, at least, they're generally a bloody rip-off. Um, you'll look at, like, I don't know, 40 bucks new and, like, 36 used. And they'll be like, look at the great savings. Yeah, those four, do those four pounds really helped me. I remember buying a couple of those used games with my friend and they don't bloody work. So I had to go all the way back to the shop and change it over. Yes, I was pretty upset, as you could probably tell, with the bitterness in the bile that is literally dripping from my voice. However, what about if my best buddy decides to lend me a game and I want to play that game just to check it out because, well, I'm curious about it. Can I do that? Um, can I, you know, take a game round a friend's house? 
without having to sign into my bloody account and download all that information. Let's say I buy the new Tekken or the new Street Fighter or the new Call of Duty, which of course they're harping on about now or whatever. Can I just take it round my friend Steven's house, put it into his console and say, look dude, this is the new X game. And he's like, awesome, or do I have to then sign in and blah, blah, blah. So I really want to see how that's all going to be handled. Right now, Sony are definitely really simple in how they're going. And I'm not saying that Sony are going the better route, because quite honestly speaking, Sony have a lot of stuff that they're holding back as well. Not that I blame them. I mean, to be fair to Microsoft, at least we know what the... Well, the Xbox looks like. I mean, Sony are making this whole big deal of the PlayStation reveal in terms of its aesthetic. I don't really care as long as it doesn't look like a sandwich toaster or something. You know, I don't care if it's, you know, pink, green with, you know, purple polka dots on it as long as it bloody well plays it. But anyway, that's just me. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a very interesting time over the next couple of weeks. I have a feeling that at least theoretically... E3 is going to be the most interesting that I've ever witnessed, and that's just theory. I mean, they're going to be coming to virtual blows, actually, and I have a feeling that because EA now are really in their corner, I really want to see who Microsoft will be grabbing. They're really putting a lot into this whole cloud-based thing, and that's great, but we'll see just how ready the world is to be introduced to that. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed my ranting. I will see you soon. Take care and bye for now.